Welcome back to Sustainable Energy. I'm Asha Sampat and I'm in Canada to discuss the benefits urban forests can bring to our planet, our quality of life and energy consumption. 13 of the world's most polluted cities are in India and locals are now taking the matter into their own hands. One of them is a former industrial engineer who's committed to plant a lot of trees to filter air pollution. Take a look. It may not look like it, but this is a police station. Sir! This is the headquarters of the 1st Battalion of uh, Karnataka State Reserve Police. And you are in the middle of an urban mini forest, nurtured and developed by police officers to make this place nice, beautiful, inclusive, and to develop a clean and green environment. The person behind this nature-based solution is a former industrial engineer who turned to forestry 10 years ago. Hello, Shibendu. How are you? Shibendu Sharma's team look to create forests everywhere, regardless of size. In this police station courtyard, they planted over 1,200 saplings from 56 native species of tree. Previously, they used to have their evening meetings inside the office, but since this forest has grown, all those evening meetings happen in this forest. This particular mini forest exists in the middle of Bangalore, one of India's busiest cities. The forest was grown using a Japanese method called Miyawaki, involving high-density planting. But the layout was inspired by Shibendu's previous job as an engineer for Toyota by applying a car manufacturing technique known as Heijunka. Instead of building car types together in groups, they're spread out for optimum productivity. Shibendu applied the idea to different species of trees and plants. We could generate a list which would tell us how many numbers of each species you should plant in a sequence and what should that sequence should be. Once we know our climax forest species, we mix them in four different layers. Shrub layer, subtree layer, tree layer and canopy layer. Since 2011, Shubendu's company, A Forest, has worked in 10 different countries, planting 138 forests in 44 cities in areas that include personal gardens to company-owned land. Within two years, this forest becomes self-sustaining. It conserves its own water. It takes moisture from the air. It produces its own food. The leaves fall. They get converted into biomass, which gets mixed inside the soil by centipedes, millipedes, earthworms, and millions of microorganisms. In this method, you have 30 times more green surface area. We are able to have 30 times more oxygen, 30 times better pollution absorption. New Delhi was ranked the most polluted capital city in 2018 by Greenpeace, and the UN says it's also set to be the second most populous by 2030. So the government is partnering with Aforest to plant forests, reduce air pollution and improve water quality. This place was the backflow of the drain. It was filled with sewage water, polluted water. If there is enough resource support, if there is enough government agencies backing this idea, within five to seven years, you could turn Delhi from a concrete city into a living urban forest city. From the government's point of view, urban forestry is a low-cost solution to Delhi's pollution problem. In the beginning, the investment going into the uh, forest may be a little more than the normal uh, plantation uh, which we carry out, but eventually the investment uh, works out cheaper. If you look at uh, the forest, you will see a lot of tiny birds in here, beautiful birds. You will see spiders, you will see ladybirds, you will see ants, you will see earthworms. And all these holes which you see on the ground here are uh, evidence of insect activity, which is uh, a bioindicator of a healthy forest. Facing major population and pollution challenges, India is a key player in the world's urban forestry community. And some high-profile people are getting involved. Bollywood actor and director Suresh Heblika is a pioneer in India's reforestation movement. Through the NGO he founded, he's planted over 250,000 trees in the last 10 years alone. In the, in the private places also, they are not interested in giving you because they have become very expensive. So we have to pursue the government, we have to put in their minds 
the importance of having forests, importance of having trees, and how they impact the environment, how they impact the society. So by doing that, we should be able to get permission to build more trees, to build these small micro forests wherever there is a land. As our cities continue to grow, both in size and population, even the smallest plot of land can be transformed into new forests on everyone's doorstep. Planting urban forest certainly looks like a good plan, but it also seems to take motivation. It definitely does. But you see, even here, UBC, Vancouver, in the middle of, of it all, in the middle of the urban area, we have a forest. So if people put their minds to it, where they work and live, they want to have trees and forests. Do municipalities need a lot of convincing and money, you know, to plant forests in the, within the cities? I think some municipalities do need that, but I think the, the power of good example is really good. And municipalities are watching each other. They're competing for, for money, for investment, for talent. So they know that uh, greening and trees can be part of being a more attractive city. So they're, they are becoming more proactive? I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. How long does it take for a city to grow a forest and for policymakers to notice its positive effects on the environment, but also its cost effectiveness in terms of energy consumption? It depends a bit where you are in the world. Sometimes you're lucky and there is already a forest and trees grow fast, but usually it is, you have to be in it for the long haul. You have to develop policies, capacities, and definitely show the benefits of, of planting trees. But we have so much good research out there that shows Trees are a very cost-effective solution to many of our challenges. How can government be encouraged to develop tree planting programs? I think it is really important for governments to, to realize the benefits, uh, to show to them that actually they can do many things, technologies and so, but in the end, green infrastructure can actually help. Trees can really help them to solve some of the problems. So I think the power of good example, but also talking with each other, cities communicating with each other and sharing good practices. Do they rely on the private sector? This is a field, you know, that have lots of business opportunities. Exactly, and I think there we have really seen a change in recent years that there's more private entrepreneurs, enterprises, architecture firms going in and really helping to push uh, innovation forward. So I think this can only work if we have a good uh, collaboration between the private sector and governments and communities. Thank you, Professor. Stay with us. Up next, we go to Milan to see how vertical forests are changing urban landscapes. 30,000 square meters of a real forest in a very small surface of an urban center. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.